I often get photos of your guys' soil and it's coupled generally with a comment of my soil won't grow anything or why does my soil look clumpy? Now, it's often referred to by dirt as dirt by some influencers. That's not the case. It's completely viable. So today's video, I'm gonna show you why influencer soil looks so much different than your at-home soil and how you can work with your at-home soil without breaking the bank. So let's jump into it. Now, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform where you have a teacher and you are the student. And it differs from that of YouTube or any other online learning platform because it allows you to do in-class projects where you can interact not only with the teachers, but the other students. If you're looking to break that nine to five grind and open up a world of new career opportunities, Skillshare is a really great place to start this. I personally utilize this because I'm trying to balance a full-time job, YouTube, and obviously my family. This means I need to take different courses on time management, for example. And when I first started out on YouTube, the online world is incredibly brutal. And so I had my inner critic really starting to kick up. And that's why a course on silencing that inner critic may be exactly what you need. So if you want to break that monotony of the nine to five, then start a side hustle or maybe just go cold turkey and small, start a whole new small business. And the way to do that is actually by clicking that link down below and signing up for one month free. The first thousand people to click that link down below and check out some of these classes. One of my favorite courses, if you wanted to check it out, it's actually one that I put up myself. Yes, I'm a Skillshare teacher and I intend to put more classes up very soon. So if you wanna learn about gardening or if you wanna break the nine to five monotony, go check out Skillshare courses down below. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and and back to our video. So down here, I have the classic influencer soil. It doesn't really look like soil. It's very loose and fluffy, and it almost looks fake. You're probably wondering if you're gardening in soil, how the heck that this is even possible. And it's actually because it's a soil-less medium, meaning it's not actually using mineral soil, and it's using compost, manure, maybe peat, old potting soil as the medium. Now there are benefits to this. For example, you don't have much compaction over time and therefore you can go no dig very easily. It'll allow you to grow potatoes and carrots and root vegetables with relative ease due to the fluffiness. It holds a lot of soil moisture. The only downfall really here is that it's incredibly expensive to implement in the garden and actual nutrients is something that continually needs to be re-added over time, meaning you need a continual new source of compost, manure, etc., and so forth. And actual mineral soil, we can get away with fertilizing just a little bit less. So let me show you what soil should look like. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with growing in the compost manure or the soilless mediums. There may be some drawbacks that could affect the overall yield, but it's not going to kill your plants. That's not possible. However, one thing you may want to consider is actual garden soil. So it's a hybrid between mineral soil and soilless medium. For me personally, I only use garden soil inside of a raised bed. Now this raised bed in particular is using it because it is a very short bed. It's not very large. And this actually allows me to garden with ease. It doesn't compact. It has really high moisture holding capability and because I'm not able to get on top of this soil and actually loosen it up appropriately or properly, this is what I lean on. So garden soil, typically speaking, is 50% compost manure and 50% mineral soil. You can get this pre-mixed by the soil depot you're purchasing your soil from, or in many cases, you can actually uh, just make this at home on your own in your actual garden by incorporating or rototilling in an organic material like compost or manure. So whether you purchase it as a garden soil or you make it at home, it's entirely possible. And it is much lighter than actual mineral soil on its own. If you know you're gonna have lack of access to a rototiller or maybe mobility issues when it comes to using a broad fork, pitch fork, or a spaded shovel to break up the soil, then I actually would go with that garden soil mix because of the nice fluffiness of it. It tends to work very, very nicely. So let's check out the next one. So behind me here is actual mineral soil. Mineral soil can get blocky and aggregate and people usually claim this to be just dirt or lifeless soil. But the reality is that's what soil does. It's meant to aggregate. There's several different mechanisms in which this happens, such as uh, plant exudates help with this, 
just microbe activity in general can help with blockiness or aggregation and it's natural for soil to do so. Now I personally like to break that aggregation up and that's particularly true if I'm doing root vegetables, potatoes, things of that nature, anything that grows underground that I want to harvest. The reason for this is because that aggregation can cause a little bit of pressure on the roots which won't yield those really pretty market type uh, root vegetables. So you may want to loosen that soil up. Now, the nice part about this is tillage is an evil word in uh, society right now. So you don't have to till till. You can actually get away with, you actually can commonly get away with a no-till method such as a broad fork or a pitch fork which is completely supported by the no-till community despite being tillage, but I digress. And that's a great way to break up that soil surface. What I personally like to do, whether I'm sowing seeds or planting tubers or transplants, is actually go through the soil and break it up. So this soil would have been a cracked, kind of uh, aggregated looking block. And all I've done is taken the time to make it into a nice soft powder. And I use my hands to do that. So just digging in, breaking it up, and then sowing my seeds or whatever I'm doing in this case. So this right here is getting planted this weekend, uh, which will be the first week in June when it's getting planted. So definitely something to consider. So overall, when it comes to soil, soil can come in all different shapes and sizes. It can be a humus type organic soil that is completely made up of organic materials. It can be a combination of the two, which is very easily manipulated and generally doesn't aggregate. Or it can be something that aggregates and goes blocky and gets crusty. And this is still all manageable. Now, if you're gonna stick with regular mineral soil, which I think you should always do because that is just the best way to do it. Work with mother nature. And if you wanna stick with that, do so. Take the time to break it up with a broad fork, or in some cases you may need a rototiller for the first year or so just till you can get a hang of it. Over time, you're gonna learn that get the, your hands a little bit dirty and actually break up that aggregation. This is going to allow for really good seed germination, ease of transplanting or planting of tubers in the case of potatoes. What I will say is that mineral soil does best when mulched, and I have a video coming out on mulch very soon, and so you wanna maybe consider that as well. Now mulch can come in all different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to go over that in the video. It doesn't have to be XYZ mulch. I'm going to give you so many different options, most of which are actually free. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Bronx is my rototiller. He's got a nice little hole in there for me. It's a lot of hard work put into that. Thank you, Bronx. I appreciate that very much. I'm out here editing in the garden and I always forget to see this, but hit the subscribe button, please. It means the world to me. So many of you are not subscribed, but you keep coming back for more. So make sure you hit that and happy gardening.